Throughout our lives as humans, we try to fit in. But I think what we actually want more than anything is to feel like we're special, unique in some way. To be important enough for those around us to care. Yet I wonder, who might care about something they don't usually see? And why? It's a very attractive, very different looking plant, like it doesn't even belong on this planet. I think it's just a really charismatic species. Uh, it's like a very important nursery habitat, similar to the mangroves of the tropics. People told me to play with it as one would play with nunchucks. I didn't do that. literally underwater there's just these huge long strands of, of seaweed that it's like a forest underwater it's a really cool habitat. Bull kelp or just larger kelps in general that build these forests need a rocky substrate in order to attach to and so they have these um, holdfasts that they attach to the rocks and within the holdfasts there's lots of invertebrates and like really cool organisms that live in there. And then also um, they have these really long stipes that come up to the surface and then they have like one float filled with air and pneumatocysts and those are attached to the, to the blades and the blades kind of just trail on the surface. And so you have this whole almost underwater forest canopy that's completely housed and protected for all these um, really cool invertebrates to reside in essentially. And on top of that they're also um, very flexible so that means that even when they're really large when they get hit with a big wave they can collapse and uh, that reduces the forces that they feel. Well, I think it's amazing that they're an annual and that they can grow so abundantly within a year as well as reproduce and um, just seeing their life cycle in action is a really amazing thing. What is it that makes bull kelp so special though? So kelp in general where they grow are essentially the engine that runs the whole general ecosystem. Well, it provides um, protection for young fish, so uh, young fish recruits, such as rockfish for example, will, um, they're, as larvae, they'll actually be usually cast out of their uh, natal kelp forest and um, be basically floating around, and once they get large enough, they'll have to return to that kelp forest, because that'll provide them protection from predators, um, and it also, uh, because it's such such a diverse community that it creates, um, there's uh, just a lot of food and a lot of life that can be supported there. It also like takes up a lot of this wave stress too. So if something is residing in the holdfast of the kelp, the kelp itself is um, having that those wave forces exerted on them, and then th those organisms in return are protected. So what they do is they have first shot at the light. Light comes, hits them, they take out what they want, and then whatever is left over is for the rest of the community down at the bottom. Bull kelp being so fast growing is also quite leaky, so it, what that means is that as it's photosynthesizing, it's, a lot of its carbon that it's producing is actually not staying in the thallus or not staying in the body of the plant and is instead going out um, into the water, and that uh, fuels growth in a lot of other organisms. If you look at a cormorant, this is a diving bird that eats fish. The kelp carbon that you find in a cormorant is about 40 percent. So through the food chain, starting from the kelp, up through the little things that ate it, and things that ate those things, and other things, up and up and up, to the bird, brought in to that bird about 40 percent of its carbon. So that's how significant it is. And if you didn't have, if you didn't have the kelp, and there are places that there isn't kelp, you still have an ecosystem, but it's not as dynamic, and doesn't have as much energy, it doesn't have the fast turnover rate, which is very exciting for ecology. And the really amazing thing about that is that these environments that are so harsh to live in is probably the most diverse area in, the, in North America when it comes to algal species, especially like kelps as well. 
and um, we're just trying to figure out how they can survive. And the really unique thing about bull kelp is they get so big and they grow so fast. And um, a big question is, is like, how are they able to be so big with these large velocities that are exerted on them? And um, like previously mentioned, it's because they can be able to conform and fold um, their fold their tissues and fold their bodies in order to conform in the flow and reduce their drag in order to be able to grow so large which is unique, not most organisms can do that. Bull kelp's population decline has been called one of the most important unseen environmental challenges that we face today. Runoff, for instance, can uh, reduce um, the clarity of the water. It can make the water more turbid, which means that um, these organisms, of course, rely heavily on, on light, rely heavily on the sun um, for a source of energy. And, if you cut that off by making the water super murky, it's going to basically limit uh, their ability to grow in deeper waters, and that can definitely um, be detrimental to populations. In general, um, algae don't have a, any vascular tissues, and so and they obviously reside in the water. And so, what is in the water is directly affected onto their tissues. They're like completely exposed to the environment, and they're like regulated by the environment. So, if there is something bad in the water, like pollution or um, runoff, then that's obviously going to affect their tissues in some way because they can't avoid it at all. It's just directly transferred into their tissues. If there is an oil spill, it, it affects everything. So right now I'm working on a project in Kodiak, Alaska, that was hit by the Exxon Valdez a couple of decades ago, an oil spill, and we're still trying to get the kelp to come back. It's there, but it's not, it's not as rich as they would like. We wouldn't be able to have as strong fisheries, um, both commercial and recreational, and that could be in incredibly detrimental to uh, our economy. Storm prevalence has, is predicted to increase with climate change, and so uh, more frequent large waves, um, fast velocity flow, could uh, also be detrimental to kelp populations. I guess it's just as simple as, you know, rising sea level, loss of, loss of um, coastline, and if you have a loss of coastline, like some of the stuff that's been here for millions of years, it's formed for millions of years and it's protecting all of those forests and everything behind it, right? So if the sea level is rising, then it's not only affecting these intertidal communities, but it's going to affect the people and the communities that are living around it as well because they're not going to be, they're going to be more exposed to the ocean environment rather than being protected. And if the ecosystem is out of you know, equilibrium or is under stress, then the individuals in there, whether they realize it or not, they too are under stress. Everything interacts with everything else. How could anything be more important for us to care about?